Hey guys, this guy here from YCG, your casual gamer. In the following two episodes, we're going to be building our simple timer together. It's more of a, a countdown to how much time you have to escape the facility. So in the first part, we're going to take care of the UMG aspect and build this little animation so that when you press play, it actually uh, brings the timer up before it gets started. And then we're going to make our uh, variables, hook them up to our first person character and build this little sound cue together. So you're going to need to get those two sounds. I'm going to leave a link in the description below where you can get them for free. And in the second part, we're going to build our blueprint and then hook it up to our level blueprint. And the final result should be that when you jump inside the play and you read the box, the alarm goes off and then you have to escape the facility. And when you reach the end, you've won. The timer stops and that's it. So stay tuned. All right, so hopefully you got the two sounds that uh, I posted in the link below. And the first one is gonna be the alarms over here. And the second one is the burning music so that's uh, very loud but we're gonna be able to play with that so we're gonna create a sound cue out of the two so just pick one of them and create cue and let's call it alarm uh, dash scene dash sound effect X there we go double click inside and then over here what we're going to do is we're going to make a mixer. Just like that. Put the output over here. And then let's go get our sound. The other one, the alarm, just drag it in. Like that. And connect the two together and you're done. And make sure to put them to looping. That way the music's not going to stop unless you finish the level. And that's it. Now you can close this. That's going to be our sound, our sound cue for the uh, music. Now the next thing we need to do is inside the first person character. We're going to create our timer variables. Now I found the best way to do a, cu a fully customizable system was to put those variables here. But they could have been in a blueprint if you wanted to. If you're always planning on having only one instance of the timer every uh, level. But if you're, if in my case, it was pre preferred to have the variables here. So let's go ahead and make them. So for my case, there's the seconds, which is going to be a float. And we're going to put it inside the category uh, timer. Then there's the... Let's duplicate that. Oop. Let's make another one. Call it millisecond millisec-1. And millisec-2. Now, for my case, we're only going to have 30 seconds to exit the facility. I don't need any minutes, hours, or days. So, therefore, I only need one variable for the seconds. And I'm only going to use two of the milliseconds instead of having the three of them. Because I find that just two is enough. And it brings out a nice uh, stress factor to the character to make sure that he hurries up. When you only see seconds, I don't find it as stressful. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, if you had minutes, you would have to have two variables for one for each seconds and I'm going to show you why in the second uh, well further on in the video so now that you have your variables make sure they're editables just by clicking the little eye over here and you're done with the main character so let's close this now all we have to do uh, all we have left to do is the UMG so let's go inside the UMG over here folder and let's make a user interface widget blueprint and let's call it simple timer dash umg double click inside and now we build our pro, uh, our little umg so now the first thing you're going to need is a border let's drag this here just pick it and drag it about the middle of the screen doesn't really matter where it is size to size to content make sure the uh, brush is set to invisible because you don't want that to be seen leave the content whoops 
leave the content and opacity uh, at white. You need that because that's what's going to be inside. So now you're going to go get a horizontal box. Drag this inside your border. Horizontal box because you want your things to be on the horizontal uh, level. So that means from left to right. All right. And now we need text. Just simple text. We're going to have four of them. So one for the second, one for the comma in between, one for the milliseconds one, and one for the millisecond two. And just let's go ahead and name them. Just press F2 and let's call this sec. Two is going to be comma, sorry, comma, or like, let's just call it space. Three is going to be milli one. And four is going to be milli two. And now, by default, they're going to give you like this huge text box. So just let's go ahead and put this to 30, just to see how it looks. This one is going to be space, trema, like the two little points, and space again. Third one is going to be zero, and fourth one is going to be a zero. And now you can see that it's pretty small. Let's put this to, I don't know, 32. Yeah, 32 sounds about better. 32. This to 32. And this to 32. For the size of the letters. And that looks about right. Good. Now for the border, if you're not too satisfied with it, just put it like this. At the end, we're going to anchor it and now let's make our little intro animation for the uh, for the text so that we want the text to start here and then get a bit bigger and go all the way up and I have this little flashing to it so let's create an animation so clicking on the border click animation and call it a countdown slash timer appear and I enter. And now to make the animation very simple, we're going to go click on what we want to change. So the first thing we know we're going to change is the content uh, color. We want it to flash, like we said. So we're going to click on this over here. Actually, it's just going to be with the alpha. We don't need anything else. So just click over here on zero. And let's open this up. And then we're going to be playing. So hold shift and roll. Just to make sure you center your, just roll with the mouse wheel if you have one, just to center your uh, view and control drag to, to, to see your plane. And we're going to be from 0 to 2 and that's all we need. So now let's go to, at first I want it to be invisible, so let's make this one, select it and let's put it to 0. And then at 0 0.5, we want it at 1, and then so on and so forth. Over here is going to be 0. And then over here is going to be back to, let's, let's make these a little faster. So over here, 1, enter. Over here, maybe another. Another zero here, enter, and then lastly at two, you want it to be visible, so one. And that's it. Now let's make the transformation. So again on the border, we're going to click at the uh, transformation. And let's just click at the full thing over here. Because we're going to play with a few things in here. So at two... I already know where I want everything to, to go, so let's make sure to start everything at zero first. Let's make one mark over here and one mark at the end. So now, at two, I want the scale to be 1.5, 1.5 of Y and 1.5 of X. So I want this to happen when it's at the end. Now I want the transitions. Let's make this a little further back. I want the trans I want translation on the y axis. So that means I want this to move up uh, up. So I'm going be 
in the minuses and just adjust it to what you want which is the top of my screen over here you can see on the canvas so it's about minus 400 for you it could be different maybe a little bit more just I want it to be really at the top over here and there you have it compile save everything and let's see if it works when I press play it flashes and goes all the way up whoop something brings it that back down oh yes yeah, sorry at the end I need to delete that and there we go let's try it again play goes all the way back up and it stays there and there you go you're done with your simple animation for your UMG so I, I, I think that's a nice intro for a timer you guys decide if you want anything uh, different now let's associate our variables and to do so we're gonna need to go in the uh, a graph and the first thing you're gonna have to do is like always cast to uh, first person character get player character okay character and let's promote it to a variable call it my character if I learn how to write like always and then select this and call it set uh, defaults good now when the event is construct there's something else that we need over here we need the animation to play it's not gonna auto play like anything else so you need to have the count timer over here control drag it out and just drag out of there and say play and you have here play animation it's gonna play the number of loop only once and forward and you're done with your graph very short program and it works perfectly now last thing that we need to figure out is we need to connect the variables to our timer set timer because right now it's going to be 30 but nothing is going to be able to change it because it's not connected to our main character yet we we did establish the link but we didn't set up the uh, binding so now let's bind our text to our variables we created in our main characters and our main character before so the second that's the 30 over here let's go ahead and select a binding create binding the get text is good for the text I'm just gonna remove the zero move that out and very simple just control drag the character here and get second there you go and just connect those two together and you're done now they're connected so as soon as you update this variable over here in your and your and my character it's gonna update on screen if given you have the uh, widget on screen at the moment now let's do the same thing for the millisecond and the uh, the first millisecond and the second one. So just go ahead, bind, create binding. Again, I'm going to change this to no zero at the end. And you see over here, it's really really easy. Get milli one. In our case, this is that's why it's important to name your variables so that you understand what you're doing, or else you're always going to get stuck, like going back and be like what did I do now it's all there very easy to do I understand what I wrote it's gonna be easy to come back to grab this and uh, get milli to and connect them so there you have it we are done with the first part of our uh, building simple timer so now we have everything connected so in the next episode all we have to do is build our program and then everything should work so hope you enjoy this see you in the next part <laughs>